Okay, so uh, what me and Peyton are doing right now, and yes, Peyton is there working along with Cody, and uh, Tim's off doing something else. Uh, Joseph didn't show up yesterday because he's not feeling well, and that's okay because if he doesn't show up, I don't have to pay him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, that's another camera, Will. Oh, you want this? Yeah, you will fall. I don't believe that. He just landed on my camera. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there are little giblets inside that piece that I'm holding in my hand there. There's a spring, a plunger, and a little disc, and they have to go back onto the camshaft. Uh, the boys took them off. They shouldn't have taken them off, but they took them off anyway, which created a bigger problem. It seemed quite difficult to get it back in the way it was supposed to be. But, hey, what are you going to do? So... Uh, there's a torque spec for those things, so you'll see me torquing them down uh, and getting them in the right position so that they that the uh, sprocket on that thing actually runs true. Now those that is your timing advance. So there's oil pressure that goes into those things, and oh my god, it, it's just a, it's not a 1940 Ford flathead V8. Let's put it that way, or a 36 Ford flathead V8. There, you know, those are vacuum advanced, where these are hydraulically advanced by using the engine oil. Um, I know that there's some there's Timothy. I know that there's some people out there that think that uh, the boy is just sitting there watching me. Well, he's not. He, right now, he's off camera and he is reading the instruction manual on how to put this thing together correctly. And even though, uh, even though I thought I knew how to do it correctly, and I did actually know how to do it correctly. There was an easier way that was described in the book, and it was perfect. <laughs> to, to quote the president, it was perfect. You put the, you put the, there's a timing mark on the sprocket for the crank, and there's two timing marks on those gizmos that I'm torquing down right now, and on the timing chain, there are two pink, uh, painted pink links, and one blued link. So the blued link goes on the timing mark that is uh, parallel with one of the pins that holds the tensioner on, and then the uh, the camshafts get once you set that blued link, then the camshaft there's a mark on those camshaft sprockets that align with the pink doodad, and then once you get those on and the tensioners in, then you turn the engine. In the counterclockwise position, because if you turn it the opposite direction, it claims that it'll hit the valve, the, the piston will hit the valve. And I'm going to continue to talk here for a second. The, uh, the, uh, yeah, it, it, and then you turn it so that the uh, keyway is facing the very bottom of the engine, and then you set the timing on the other, on the other side, and that worked wonderfully. So here we've applied pressure to these. Uh, yeah, I guess they would be gears or, or sprockets on there, and they do shift uh, inside. There's actually an actuator of some sort in there. Plus, there's these spring tension hydraulic actuators, which actually put pressure on the springs as, or not on the springs, on the chains as they wear in. Now, there are timing marks there. There's a timing mark there. Peyton has done a wonderful job and keeping me straight I would have done it the hard way I really would have I'd have just said fine fuck it we're gonna put it there we're gonna just turn that that way and that that way but in the book it actually had it set that it was very very simple and you just put a big old spanner if you're from the UK on this nut here as I can show you right there and the keyway is where it belongs the mark was there and you just you see how that's got square shoulders? You put that guy on there and bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. So we are timed according to the book. And uh, now we're just going to start putting all the giblets on the uh, timing cover and we have to put the oil pan on and that's going to involve a lot of goop and a lot of time. So uh, I'll probably be fast forwarding some of the stuff through here, but for the most part, uh, the BRZ will be back in business probably, I'm hoping tomorrow afternoon we'll be done with it, back in business. And uh, we'll make sure that we repair this this ground here because without that it's just going to 
cause other issues, electronic gremlins and electrolysis and other decaying parts. So I'm going to shut up now and get on with the next part of this project. Okay, for more uninteresting Subaru videos, um, yeah, we've got it timed up. I don't know where I left off before, but we've got the oil pan on. He's going to change the oil, the water pump and the... Uh, and the thermostat here tomorrow. Hopefully he can get those parts tomorrow. I don't know if Subaru's open or not. I'd rather him use a Subaru part other than a, other than a uh, oh, what do you call it, part, a uh, aftermarket deal. <coughs> so tomorrow we'll go ahead and put the uh, time and gear covers on and get it buttoned up and get the flywheel on. And I guess pretty much we're ready to put the thing back in and then put all the giblets that need to go on there. I got to do the flywheel and, the, and all the clutch crap that's got to get put on there. Uh, yeah, and then I can put it all back in. Uh, we got everything. Everything's clean, clear, timed, ready to go. So that's it. On to the next thing.